Hi, Mark again. Okay, um, I wanted to do just a quick follow up to the last video that I made about using um, IconD as a VST host uh, in conjunction with Reason. Um, and I wanted to cover a couple more things that could be done, but also uh, perhaps make clearer a couple of points. At uh, first, just a small mistake that I made. Obviously, here I'm showing Workbench with uh, approximately the setup that I had before. The um, mistake I made was, if you remember here, I was routing CC channel, uh, CC3 to the parameters. Um, and unfortunately, when I took, went over to Reason, I started talking about middle, MIDI channels and changing this external instrument 2 to MIDI channel 3. Of course, I actually meant that it should stay as MIDI channel 2. Um, what I meant to say is that this knob can be assigned then to MIDI channel 3. Sorry, I said it again. To CC3. Uh, so if we turn that on and select this to 3. Uh, it's worth also noting that Reason is pretty limited in that it will only send through the mod wheel here and whatever CCs you have assigned here. Uh, so if you're sending other CCs from your keyboard, they won't come through just because of the way Reason works. Uh, but as I said, the useful thing apart from here is if you flip around on the back, that CC can actually be controlled by a CVN. Um, so that means that you can really integrate it well into Reason. So that's, that's just one more small mistake. Um, the second thing, was I use this console mixer uh, and many people will say, well, yeah, but I'd want to mix it within uh, Reason. So that's quite straightforward enough. As I say, you don't really need to use this uh, console mixer and effect if you're using Reason. Um, so what we can do is we can delete that. And as I mentioned here, in our inputs, we can create as many inputs as we like onto our audio device here. And if you're using Soundflower or Jack, Jack then um, you can quite easily create as many as you want here. Um, and so I could quite easily so create some more entries here. And then as I mentioned before, I can basically just come into the audio agent here, select these audio outputs. Oh. Let's do one at a time. Select the audio outputs here. And I can select this one on to say three and four. And then I can put this one's channels and outputs here on to one and two. Uh, I simply didn't do that because um, I've got an audio interface which just allows one channel through and I prefer not to use Soundflower. But if you want more, and you, and, and you want to be able to mix it inside um, Reason, then this would be the way to do it. The second thing I also mentioned fleetingly, uh, but I, I will repeat this again, um, is about output. So for example, if we had an, an FX audio unit, we wanted to actually be able to route it back um, from Reason into IconD through the VST. Again, we would just create another audio unit here um, uh, audio unit and then we can create output channels on here so this is the output from the audio device remember if you're using something like Soundflower this is a, is a virtual device um, and then we would just take the outputs from here again if we now select a plugin uh, we could select that. Um, uh, my window's a bit off the screen. And then we'll select Tumor again. Okay, and then we close this. I managed to close it, never mind. If I bring up I can do, it's actually sitting behind it. <laughs> um, no problems there. Now we can obviously just, it, take the audio devices inputs and if we go here you can actually rename these as well but I'm not going to bother uh, we can select the outputs there and 
then on the audio outputs. Again, we would, if you, you could use a mixer in between as we showed before, but uh, again, select a wire and again, we can then put this onto a, a different audio channel. So that would mean that. Just one point on that. Um, again, if I wanted to, um, I could create another MIDI processor and I could route stuff through here into the MIDI input. If you want to be controlling um, the audio effect via MIDI from uh, Reason. Um, if you're not going to be, then obviously the audio unit needs to know, uh, sometimes you want to have the audio units permanently active, in which case in Eigen D this is considered the so-called tail time. So this basically is what allows a, um, a VST to become inactive when there's no activity. But if you want it enabled at all time, you just click that off. Okay, so that's using it as an FX loop. Now, final thing I want to say is that it was really a bit of a drawback that I showed here. You'll notice when I connected this MIDI input, I put a continuous controller here, but it doesn't go via the MIDI processor. The problem with that is that, of course, this MIDI processor was filtering MIDI channels, and I can no longer do that because I'm not I'm coming directly. The way around that is actually basically just not is to basically not use MIDI processors. We can come through here, um, and then to just create another MIDI input channel. Um, and now these are completely independent of, it, of one another. So now we can wire these directly up to here, by here, all the messages are coming through. We can now do, still do the same trick I did with the continuous controller output. I won't go through to that. But if I show, um, the difference would be if I show reason now, is that I could still I could send both on channel one, for example, and then I just select I can labs two. That would it so those are completely independent. The final thing that's pretty important is um, clocking. Now I didn't really think about it initially because I was thinking about MIDI instruments, but obviously with FX and stuff, quite often we need to clock the input. Um, for things like LFOs. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing is we're going to have to select, tell reason that we want to send the clock. And we first of all do that inside our preferences here. And then we send the clock sync here to output to one of the MIDI channels. Now you can only send it to one place in, um, in reason. So uh, we'll select one randomly, doesn't matter which. The next thing you have to do in Reason is also tell it to send MIDI clock. So it's MIDI, Reason is going to be our MIDI master, which is kind of normal for doors because we want transport control. Uh, IGD has the ability to act as master, but not as useful really in this scenario. So now what we need to do is we need, need to actually send this information to the audio unit. And that's very simple. We actually use a metronome device here and we then simply wire the metronome up to the audio unit and up to the MIDI input. Now inside the metronome, we can set its properties here, we then enable MIDI clock. Now the next thing this is interesting is MIDI clock latency. Because Reason could only send one clock, we could only do um, we can only have one latency. Now that's a bit of a problem because obviously we need to introduce VST uh, latency as well potentially. So what I'm actually going to do instead of that is to actually create two metronomes, one for each VST. And then again I can take this from the MIDI input that's being sent to by reason and I can then connect it here. Now this allows me to actually allow for latency, um, not only for the fact that it's going via MIDI, but also for the fact that there is obviously going to be VST-induced latency with some VSTs. So 
we can now, oh, sorry, on the second one, I obviously need to again enable the MIDI clock, but I can also set the latency here um, in milliseconds um, for each individual VST. Um, so that can be quite handy. Um, so that's that really. So I think, yeah, that shows that we can actually use an audio loop back in, so we could use uh, audio uh, VST FX is quite happily. Um, this shows how we can actually clock a VST um, or audio unit and also the fact that we can actually have multiple channels so that we can actually do the mixing in the host rather than actually in IGND. So I hope that's useful um, and I'll be back soon with another one.